Welcome to today's AMFT webinar on advocacy for federal MFT student and faculty dollars. We're glad to have you with us here. It's a kind of a dreary Friday afternoon in Washington. We had a little snow and a little rain, but uh, that's okay. Certainly not some of the things that you're getting. I'm Walter Hill uh, with AAMFT's division development team, and our presenter this afternoon is Brian Rasmussen, who is our federal legislative uh, manager, which means that Brian is the, uh, the person who handles all of our, our lobbying and relationships with members of Congress, the executive branch, and uh, other entities across the river in Washington, D.C. Uh, we're very happy to have you here today. Brian is going to take you through some of the issues that are germane to federal funding for our programs want to uh, make sure that all of you can actually speak when it's uh, we come to our question time. So if you look beside your name, there's a vertical panel, and the fourth one is a little hand. I want, I'm going to count to three, and I want everyone to click on the hand, which will raise it to let me know that you want to talk. So everybody set, got your finger on your mouse, you're going to left click on the, uh, the, the, the hand on one, two, three. All right, we got 100% here. Now, just because I love you, I'm going to mute you all again and take your hands down. <laughs> so when you're ready to, to ask a question, just raise your hand, and I will open up your line, and you'll be able to talk to us. Sounds like a plan. Brian, thank you for being here today. I think we're in good shape. Uh, Okay. Um, just a reminder here that if you are using the telephone only, please look on your control panel and click the button that says telephone. Uh, if you don't and we let you speak, it will create all sorts of echoes and, and complete havoc. So make sure that you click on the telephone button if you are on the telephone. If you are listening to us through the microphone and speakers, on your computer, that's the default setting, and you are fine. You have to do absolutely nothing. Right. Brian, again, uh, thank you for, for leading this seminar, or this webinar, and uh, of course, you'll be meeting all of these folks uh, in March at the leadership conference to take both the uh, the rookies and the uh, returning players uh, through the uh, the hoops to to get them to Capitol Hill and be effective for AAMFT. All yours, Brian. Thanks, Walter. Just a reminder, um, you may recall from the message about setting your Capitol Hill visits that we assigned each state, each division, to one of three topics. And that was based on that state congressional delegation's representation on the committees in Congress that have jurisdiction over the three issues. So today we have states that have predominantly jurisdiction over what are called the House and Senate Appropriations Committee. We also last week talked about Veterans Affairs, VA jobs for MFTs, and next Friday we'll be speaking about Medicare. Uh, we did this because in the past we had people talking about several issues. That can be challenging in terms of, uh, you know, if it's Tuesday, this must be Belgium, but then the next day it's something else. And we did get positive feedback from you leaders at our last conference that you like this format because uh, you can concentrate only on one issue. Why is federal funding needed for MFT students and faculty? Well, we have a large unmet mental health and substance abuse service needs, especially in rural communities and minority areas. And this really is not something that individual practitioners or even states can address. It's really a national problem. Uh, and that does suggest that the federal government become involved, which it has for a number of years. Only the federal government has the financial resources 
to allow qualified behavioral health students to be trained and for faculty to do outcomes-oriented clinical research, which is, of course, going to support improving practice for efficacy and better results for your clients. Now, the health reform law has a number of positive elements, but um, it is not the case that there is much money in that particular law for behavioral health training or research. There is a little money, but it's not going to compare to the fact that we are having anywhere between about 20 and 30 million people who are going to be newly eligible for insurance, whether expanded Medicaid or the so-called state-based exchange plan starting January 1st. So we have to look at other federal programs. Some of the key programs for MFT students and faculty, one is the SAMHSA, an acronym for the HHS Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration's Minority Fellowship Program. There are six professional associations, including AAMFT, that are grantees under this program, and we presently have 22 doctoral fellows who are, of course, in marriage and family therapy programs. Another program that you may have heard of is the National Health Service Corps. This provides both scholarships and loan, student loan repayments for people who train as healthcare professionals, including MFTs, among others, and when they uh, finish and become licensed, they finish their academics and become licensed, then they have the option in the case of the loan repayment or the requirement in the case of the scholarships to serve in underserved areas that are defined by the federal government for a number of years. And at that point, their loans are considered repaid. Right now, only a third of the applicants to this program are actually funded due to federal funding limits. Another program which is similar, although it does include as well funding for faculty research, is under Title VII of the Health Professions Education Act. It is not limited to folks pursuing uh, serving minority communities. It is not per se requiring any uh, clinical service work off, but it does have scholarship and as well as loan repayment and uh, faculty research funding. And then of course within the National Institutes of Health, we have the National Institute of Mental Health. That is the premier research funder in the behavioral sciences. And SAMHSA also does have some research funding oriented toward uh, implementation of research in a clinical setting. So uh, research to practice kind of focus as opposed to the more basic things like brain biochemistry. What are some of the challenges that are facing these programs? Funding under any of these programs is not guaranteed by law. It's not an entitlement like Medicare. So it has to compete each year with other federal funding priorities. Now, you may remember around the new year that there was a lot of news about the so-called fiscal cliff, which would have cut uh, programs across the board in the non-entitlement uh, federal arena. What happened then, apart from some of the tax changes, is that Congress and the President basically kicked the can for cuts down the road from January 2nd until March 1st, next Friday. Now, all indications are a week out that indeed there will be these cuts. They're going to be very widespread. For example, within the Department of Defense, uh, employees starting in April through September, if it's not uh, further addressed, are going to be furloughed one day a week. 
the civilian employees, everybody. And we're talking about 800,000 civilian DOD employees. So you get some sense of the magnitude that's coming. Now, if this weren't bad enough, we know also that the funding authority in its entirety for all the programs that I've just mentioned expires March 27. The civics process of Congress is supposed to be that every year before the start of the fiscal year, which is on October 1st, Congress sets down and enacts legislation to say in program A we are going to provide so many million or billion through program ZZZ, so many in each case. That has not happened at all over the past several years. And instead what's happened is partial year funding. This is why we are facing what's called the expiration of a continuing resolution, a CR. And technically, if Congress does not extend that, which could be at the same funding amounts, minus the sequestered cuts, or it could increase, it could decrease even further. If that is not agreed to by March 27th, all so-called non-essential federal funding, except for entitlements like Social Security payments, Medicare, but Defense Department, all the domestic programs will shut down. In fact, in the winter of 1995-96, in December and January of that period, we had a dispute between uh, President Clinton, the Democrat, and Speaker Gingrich, a Republican in the House. And the government did shut down in these functions for 28 days altogether. So this is a rather serious situation that we are facing within the next month. In addition to that, Congress is starting to get ready for the new fiscal year budget starting October 1st, the fiscal 14, 2014 budget. And we don't know what the baseline is. We don't know how much, given what I've just said, is actually going to be spent in the current fiscal year, fiscal 13. What we do know is that the SAMHSA Minority Fellowship Program, uh, under the President's budget proposal last year, would have been cut by almost a quarter. Now, fortunately, Congress did not agree to that, but we are definitely looking at potentially having that sort of thing repeat. Other programs also are going to be affected. I mentioned the DOD employees. That includes civilian workers who provide health care, and those people include marriage and family therapists. At least one unpaid furlough day a week. The Navy is talking about two unpaid days per week. A lot of the health care is also provided by private contractors to military members because we've obviously had a ramp up in service giving our overseas deployments and the Defense Department did not want to hire permanent civilian employees given that we are withdrawing from these various overseas uh, situations. So they are already experiencing lack of renewal in some cases, and that is also affecting some MFTs' jobs. We have a few MFTs who work at the Indian Health Service for Native American tribes. Uh, they could be cut up to 2% of their budget. Now, fortunately, jobs in the VA including health and mental health jobs, are exempt from these cuts. But if you or your members are private practitioners, you may well participate in TRICARE, which is the civilian provider uh, health plan for military service members and their dependents. Sometimes military service members and their families go to military treatment facilities, Walter Reed, places like that, but they also have the option to see providers in the community. And because of the cuts, this may delay 
uh, providers receiving payment for those services. The total cut, if it does extend from March through September, will be about $85 billion. Now, this is not the only bite at this apple, because if sequestration continues into the next fiscal year and so forth, over 10 years, which is the time that technically it would apply, we're looking at reductions over $1 trillion. And that's real money even in Washington. Now, you might say, these are across-the-board cuts. That makes no sense whatsoever because, yeah, there's waste, but there are very um, important, valuable programs. Why would anybody ever set this up like this? The answer is that two years ago, uh, Congress agreed in the budget control law to set this mechanism that is now going to be triggered as a stick, a club, that would force Congress and the President into a so-called grand bargain that would say, look, we have a spending issue in our country. The current federal debt is $16.4 trillion. That's $52,000 for every citizen today. And nobody wants this ridiculous set of cuts, the meat acts. So, of course, people will get together and strike some bargain. But that never happened. Now, there's been uh, recriminations already between the political parties about who's responsible for what is going to be quite nasty. Uh, and the polls say that Republicans are more likely to be seen as the uh, villains here. However, this sequestration was originally proposed by the President's administration. Now, it does take two to tango, and Republicans did accept this. The President signed the bill into law, uh, but certainly e equal uh, 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 due in terms of the burden or, or the reason for this for both of the political parties. At the same time, we don't have any cuts to the largest parts of our federal spending, which are the entitlement programs, such as Medicare and Medicaid. Now, I will say in the Republicans' defense, late in the prior Congress, they twice did pass legislation in the House to offset the sequestration cuts through, among other means, cuts to Medicare. I don't particularly like what they proposed, but they did propose an alternative. So we basically have a situation where neither party has blinked, and we're going to see some very negative uh, effects for federal programs and likely for the uh, national economy as a whole over the next month. Now, you may have been following the fiscal cliff debate, as I mentioned, over the New Year period. The question is, will the new chairman of the Senate Appropriations Committee, Senator Mikulski, who is an MSW by training, will she and her friends be able to save the sorts of programs from the cuts that we have just mentioned? That remains to be seen, but stay tuned. And I've already mentioned that the entire federal government, with a few exceptions, would shut down if Congress does not extend the continuing resolution to keep programs funded by March 27th. The fiscal 14 budget is also under consideration. We do expect that we will see proposals from both political parties and the president to cut some of the programs that I've mentioned that do benefit MFT. So it's definitely time for some defense. Will we see these cuts minimized? Well, we'll know the answer to that by October 1st. What are we doing as an association to minimize these kinds of cuts. We're part of a coalition with the other uh, minority fellowship program grantee associations. 
that's lobbying against these cuts. We are asking for the same amount of funding. It's called level funding. In the new upcoming fiscal year, six million, as is now applicable to the current fiscal year. We had our fellows in for their winter institute, and they did visit a number of offices of the congressional appropriators uh, earlier this month. We also work in coalitions to maximize funding for the National Health Service Corps and the Health Professions Education Act. And we do have a database, members only, of NIMH grant and contract opportunities. And so uh, researchers in the MFT faculty world can go there. Um, we try to obviously assure that uh, those uh, funds are going to continue, but uh, I suspect that there will be cuts and the new awards are the areas, since many of these are multi-year grants right now, the new awards are the ones that will be most adversely affected. How can you make a difference? Well, this is about your Hill Day on March 15th. Congress is very attuned to constituents. They are people that re-elect them. Most members of Congress want to be re-elected. And especially if you make an effort to come here to Washington, they are going to be um, interested, at least if they have any sense, in what you have to say. And you're not only here as an individual, you're here as a representative of all your members within your own state, your own division. You also are the content experts on the need for more behavioral services. For example, you can say things like, we don't have enough practitioners in the inner city of uh, one of the cities in my states, minority communities there. We don't have enough practitioners probably in the rural areas in my state. You can also feel free to quickly contact your three members of Congress, your two senators and your House member, by going to the web link. And by the way, this information, uh, including the web link, will be posted, sent to you uh, by Walter after we finish uh, so that you can reference it in advance. We will be having more detailed materials for you in advance and paper to leave behind when you do your congressional visits. If there's more than one of you from a division, uh, simply we ask that you coordinate amongst yourselves as to who will be the chief spos spokesperson. If you haven't done these visits, um, you know, it's not really uh, anything to be afraid of doing. Uh, you'll probably meet with a relatively young congressional staffer. You do introductions and, you know, oh yes, well, do you know so-and-so? In that town, perhaps, you'll be asked. And then get down to the reason to support the fact that this profession of MFT does good work and that in order to continue doing that, we have to have students trained and we have to have faculty to train them as well as faculty to do the clinical research to improve professional practice. So. Uh, Personal stories are very helpful. Some of you have people from uh, the state who get funding under these programs, for example. And before we go to questions in a moment, uh, if you do have any special needs, whether it relates to a physical disability, let's say about getting around the Capitol complex, or you still might feel uncertain, you haven't done this sort of thing before, feel free to let us know that and we will try to have a staff member uh, accompany you and deal with any logistics. Um, what we'll basically be doing is, if you're not familiar with our meeting site, that is in Arlington, Virginia, just across the river from Washington. Uh, we can get on the subway 
right in the hotel building. It will take us directly to across the street from the House of Representatives office complex. The Senate office complex is about a 15-minute walk further, but uh, and uh, we will talk about the logistics. We'll get you subway maps. We'll get you other background materials uh, in advance, and uh, we also have all the uh, folders with the information that you can both review to talk from and leave a copy behind for the congressional staff. So at this point, I'd like to see if any of you have questions. And again, I'll just remind you that uh, if you look to the left of your name, you'll see four little icons. The bottom icon is the little hand. So if you uh, have a question, just click on that button. That will raise your hand, and I can open your mic. Well, Brian, apparently you've covered it all here. I don't, uh, don't see any questions. Uh, talk to us just a second, Brian, about... Uh, the time frame. We're going to leave from the hotel uh, at, what, 7 in the morning? Well, no. <laughs> I'm not going to make people get up that early, but um, it will all depend because you will be setting one or more congressional visits. Whatever your earliest visit is, you should allow about an hour and 10 to 15 minutes before that visit starts. An hour, if it is on the House of Representatives side, about an hour 15 on the Senate side. Uh, but as I say, that should be plenty of time. Uh, in the 8 o'clock, you know, 8.15 period, there are many subway trains going in the direction that you will uh, be going. So you should not have to wait more than five minutes for a train. It is 13 stops from the hotel to the House uh, Capital South Metro. No changing trains needed. Uh, so if your first appointment is at 11 a.m., then feel free to go up at 9.45 or 10. If your first appointment is at 9, then you will need to plan to be there starting out earlier accordingly. You are a remarkably silent group today, and I am not inclined to make you sit here in silence forever. So, Brian, any closing remarks here? I think you've covered it very well. This is important. You know, I, I, again, I personally remember back to the Clinton administration when uh, Mr. Clinton and Mr. Gingrich locked horns and they shut down pretty much everything around here. I recall that... Uh, the uh, the big Yule fire that burns on on the mall each year at Christmas time did not burn that year because the National Park Service was out of work and that certainly or was on uh, on furlough so there there's some significant issues here and I guess one question I would have is you said that of course the funding for the minority fellowship program is already set for the coming year and, and for actually some short time down the road. When would the next cycle be when that funding would be shortened or, or other restrictions? Well, the, the, the next fiscal year, fiscal 2014, begins October 1st. The funding on a prorata annualized basis through March 27th is set at because March is roughly from the last uh, October 1st of 12, uh, we have in essence about three million, about half of it. But sequestration could cut that on March 1st. We think it will. And if there is no agreement on, by March 27th, we think that um, you know funding could be deferred. We we have a drawdown 
in that program and we're not sure when we would not have any money to pay the fellows, but if this continues for more than a few weeks, that is quite a possibility. Brian, we have a question here from Michael in New Mexico. Michael, go ahead. Hey, you guys. I just, I'm having coffee with uh, one of the new senators on the 14th, so I want to make sure I get the materials before uh, the meeting because I'm going to meet with them in the morning. Um, most of the coffees are in the morning, so I think you're saying that's Thursday morning? Correct. What you can do, of course, you may well be coming to town earlier. We will have a packet with that information waiting for you at the hotel uh, registration desk when you check in. Is that acceptable? Yes. Um, I'll, I'll get there the 13th, so I'm assuming that there, somebody will be there that I can pick up that packet from. Yes. Michael, there will be somebody there on the 13th. I don't know who it will be because we, we not, are not planning to be there until the 14th, so enjoy your free day. But just uh, that's actually a very good point because for those of you that are, are new to the Leadership Conference and, and to the Hill Visit experience, uh, we're not just going to show you the door and point in the direction of Capitol Hill. You're going to have another chance to meet with Brian face-to-face -face, uh, on Thursday afternoon at Leadership Conference. You will, as Brian says, uh, have a, a packet of information that you can take with you that we encourage you to leave with your members of Congress after you, as you depart from your, your time together. So we're going to do everything we can to make you as prepared as possible to be successful in your visit to, with your legislators. For some of you that are on the line that will be attending Leadership Conference for your first time, are there some other questions you might want to ask, uh, particularly related to, to Capitol Hill and to uh, your legislative visits um, on the funding issues? And again, just click on the little hand, and it will show me that you're waiting to speak, and I can make that happen. Brian, we have a question from uh, Mylon Christensen in uh, North, North Dakota. Dakota. Yes, Mylon. Uh, thank, thanks, Brian. <clears throat> the uh, material that was sent out. Uh, Mylon, speak up just a little bit, please. Uh, speak up a little louder, okay. Yes, thank How's you. How's that? All yes, right. perfect. The material that was sent out regarding the... Uh, the visit on the Hill regarding our respective senators and so on. Those items are the priority items, of course. Uh, but we in North Dakota, we have a number of items that we do have in mind that we need to take up with our senators and our representatives. I just wanted to comment on that because uh, I, I think it's an opportunity not only to address these national issues, but our own respective divisions. And you've already said that, but I think it's worth repeating. Marlon, say that last part again. We, we kind of lost you there. <clears throat> I think it's worth repeating just to, to let everybody know and keep on uh, their respective divisions and in information that they need to take on to the senators and the congressmen regarding their own particular issues that they have in their, in their divisions. Uh, certainly what you guys have set forth, be it on the uh, student faculty, be it on the uh, VA, uh, Medicaid, uh, care, etc., uh, those are really what we need to address in our state is really all of those issues because they are definitely major concerns that we have. So uh, that that's just you know, you guys are already covered that. You've done that before in the previous visits that we've had on the Hill. But <clears throat> I think it's worth mentioning that 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 we all have our own issues in our own respective divisions. And uh, in our case, we have all of them which you guys have presented so well. Thank you. Thanks, Mylon. And I think the, the point is that we're trying to do two things. Um, to make it as easy on the leaders who are doing the visits, because this is not what you do for a living. We, we get that, even though what the federal government does often does affect what you do for a living. 
we're trying to keep it simple with one issue, and that's roughly parsed into thirds in terms of the number of divisions covering each of three. And we're trying to triage that by simply having, uh, looking at each of your state's delegations in Congress and where those members of Congress sit on the Appropriations Committee in the case of the divisions here today versus the Veterans Committees from last week versus the Medicare Committees which we'll address next Friday. So, um, you know, that's not always a clean issue in the sense that you may have people on two different types of committees or whatever, but we're trying to, you know, balance the triage and the simplicity elements. And that's something, as I said, that um, this was a new change in the format starting last year. We got good feedback at the post-Hill Day briefing uh, that Friday afternoon. So, um, you know, again, let us uh, know what you think about this uh, pro or con at that time also once, you, once you've done your visits. Michael, did you have another question, or did I just not take your hand down? No, I, I don't think you took my hand down. Your hand is down. Okay. All right, are there any other questions uh, before we sign off today? All right, again, well, I want to thank all of you for making some time this, this afternoon to join us for this webinar. Thank you. Uh, it's, uh, it's very important that we uh, support our association and our members through, through advocacy on Capitol Hill, where uh, so much gets done that really does affect the day-to-day -day practice of MFTs. You folks are an incredibly important part of, of the association, and you're going to do some incredibly important things when you get here for leadership conference in March. Uh, you know, you're going to be in Brian's very capable hands for uh, Thursday afternoon and most of Friday. And then Brian will, will hand you off to me and, and several others of us on staff as we get into the, to the educational and uh, uh, leadership development components of the, of the weekend. So I'm going to say so long, and again, thank you for being here, and Brian, thank you for, for sharing today. I think you did a good job in terms of, of helping people get oriented to what we're going to do. And if other questions arise, I know Walter will be telling you about how you can access the slideshow and recording, and you do have my email there if uh, you have questions that uh, come to mind at a later time. Brian is right. We are recording this webinar today, and I will send the recording to you um, early next week when it's available. And I'll also include uh, Brian's slides for the day. So, folks, I'm going to sign off. Thank you again for being here, and we will uh, see you on March the 14th in Arlington, Virginia. Thanks very much. Bye-bye.